Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to welcome back to Washington someone who is very well known here, uh, a friend and a colleague, uh, and his uh, colleagues as well. Uh, we last uh, hosted uh, Minister Teresi in February, and he's back to attend the annual dinner uh, for the National Italian American Foundation, an organization that does so much to strengthen the ties of friendship and fellowship between the people of Italy and the people of the United States. Uh, we also uh, took this opportunity to continue an ongoing, never-ending conversation about uh, all of the issues we are working on together uh, and, of course, our, our very strong uh, commitment uh, to making uh, a difference uh, in the world and beyond. And on that point, let me congratulate uh, the European Union on its uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, certainly, uh, it's quite remarkable to see how unified and peaceful uh, Europe is uh, in the 21st century, and that did not uh, happen by coincidence. It happened because of the very hard work and dedication of uh, leaders and citizens across Europe. Uh, so. Uh, for us, uh, it's a great validation as well. Uh, Italy is such a close friend and ally, a critical uh, partner on countless international issues, uh, and we look to uh, Italy to uh, lead on many of those issues. Uh, on the conflict in Syria, Italy has been with us every step of the way. In September, the foreign minister hosted Syrian opposition groups in Rome, uh, to discuss human rights and a peaceful end to the uh, conflict there. We're working together to strengthen sanctions and the violence uh, inflicted by the Assad regime and encourage uh, a peaceful democratic transition. Uh, we've also uh, worked together uh, during the course of uh, the last uh, year um, with the Monti government on economic uh, reforms in Italy and elsewhere. Uh, we really are encouraged by the leadership shown by the Monti government and Italy's progress, our close uh, ties in investment and business uh, uh, really demonstrate that we are in this together and we will grow together. And as Italy tackles bureaucratic and regulatory uh, barriers, uh, to create more growth and opportunity for the Italian people, uh, they will have a partner in the United States. So again, I thank you, Minister, uh, for uh, your work and for uh, the, the great uh, leadership you personally have shown and uh, that uh, the government of Italy is demonstrating day in and day out. And uh, we look forward to continuing our close consultations. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Secretary, dear Hillary. Let me say how pleased and honored I am to be received uh, here at the Department of State and uh, to have been able to uh, have important exchanges on uh, main uh, subjects in the international political agenda. But let me say, really, how pleased I am that you mentioned the fact <laughs> that uh, another commitment that I have tomorrow night is uh, with uh, most important uh, uh, association of the Italian-American organizations because it brings to me uh, immediately to the point that uh, uh, the importance of culture uh, in uh, foreign policy for my country. Uh, we believe in my government and uh, I am a strong believer of the principle that culture is really a fundamental backbone of Italian foreign policy, probably foreign policy for every country, but especially with Italy, this is particularly true. And that is why uh, I, as we, I have the opportunity of mentioning during our meeting uh, the program that we have put together for celebrating 2013 to have next year dedicated to the promotion of the Italian culture in the United States. So to name 2013 as the year of the Italian culture in the United States. And then in, in that sense, I will be very glad to see and to explain the program also tomorrow night. But also the reference you made to uh, the decision of the Nobel Prize Committee to uh, bestow upon the uh, European Union the uh, 
this price it is extremely important because it gives uh, the evidence of a strong sensibility that the US government and yourself in particular, Hillary, give to the role of the European Union in world's affairs and to the fundamental uh, value for the European Union of speaking with a single voice in uh, very difficult uh, situations that are around us, but uh, speaking a single voice gives importance and substance to uh, the Euro-Atlantic values and objectives, which are objective of peace, social and economic development, and understanding among people. So this is the sense that we uh, attribute also to this recognition of the European Union, and I think it is deeply shared with our American friends. Um, the discussion we had on Libya, on Mali, Syria, have been very important. Uh, our objectives are very much coincident. We are working for a, a quick stabilization and uh, uh, stabilization and also improvement of uh, the political institutions in uh, Libya. Uh, we have, I think, agreed on the importance of the election of last uh, July 7th and the political process which is developing, which hopefully will lead to a, a government in the next few days, uh, which will be uh, supported by the Libyan people and the Libyan society. As a close partner of Libya, the Italian government will continue to do its utmost to assist and contribute to the inst institutional cons consolidation and to the economic development of the country. And the same goes for Syria, a major crisis, which is so worrisome from the humanitarian point of view, but also for the instability which is bringing in a region which is already full of tensions for many uh, different reasons, but which needs to be addressed in political terms. And that's why uh, working together with the different opposition uh, groups and different opposition personalities is so important to create really another option, another future for a country that we, we want to be seen peaceful and stable and respectful, respectful of human rights and of minorities. And uh, also our exchanges on, on Iran was important and the expectation that uh, the Iranian leadership will finally decide to come back to the negotiating table in order to address specifically the concern that the international community and especially the UN Security Council has so many times raised without clear and definite answers from Tehran. Thank you again, Hillary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Secretary, in the debate, the vice presidential debate last night, uh, there was one thing that the vice president said, which was, uh, that is what intelligence told us. And there's just one issue that seems so very basic that I'm finding it difficult to understand why it's not clear, and that is whether or not there actually was a demonstration that night. Is there any clarity that you have at this moment about that? And then also, could you tell us a little bit about what you were doing when that attack actually happened? I know Charlene Lamb, who is the uh, State Department official, was mentioning that she back here in Washington was monitoring electronically from that post uh, what was happening in real time. Could you tell us what you were doing? Were you watching? Were you talking with the president? Any details about that, please? Well, Jill, before I answer your question, uh, I, I want to underscore what an invaluable partner uh, Italy has been in our efforts to support a democratic Libya. Uh, Italy played a crucial role in uh, NATO's Operation Unified uh, Protector. Uh, to protect the civilian population from Gaddafi's violence. Uh, more than 4,000 air missions were flown from uh, Sigonella alone. Uh, and in the wake of the Benghazi uh, tragedy, uh, the support of Italy has been absolutely essential. In ways large and small, uh, our Italian uh, friends and partners uh, helped us uh, evacuate our people on September 11th. Uh, they helped us get uh, the FBI team uh, in and in so many other ways. So I personally want to uh, thank you, uh, Julio, and thank you, 
uh, through you, your government, for everything that you have done. And as you said, we will continue to work together to try to uh, stabilize Libya and give the Libyan people the kind of uh, future that uh, they have so clearly uh, stated they want. Um, with respect to uh, your questions, Jill, I think that uh, it is uh, very important to uh, recognize that uh, uh, we have uh, an investigation going on. We have uh, an accountability review board uh, that is just uh, beginning uh, its work. Uh, there is much we still don't know, and I am you know, the first to say that. Uh, but as someone who has been at the center of this tragedy from the beginning, I do know this. Uh, there is nobody in the administration uh, motivated by anything other than trying to understand what happened. And we are doing all we can uh, to prevent it from ever happening again anywhere. Uh, and of course, we are as a government doing uh, what it takes to track down those who were responsible. Uh, to this day, to this day, we do not have a complete picture. We do not have all the answers. Uh, no one in this administration has ever claimed otherwise. Every one of us has made clear that we are providing the best information we have at that time, and that information continues to be updated. Uh, it also continues to be put into context and uh, more deeply understood uh, through uh, the uh, process we are engaged in. Uh, Ambassador Rice had the same information uh, from the intelligence community as every other senior official did. Uh, and, and that's the very way that I'm you know, answering your question today because uh, we can only tell you what we know uh, based on our most current understanding of the attack and what led up to it. Obviously, we know more as time goes by and we will know even more um, than we did hours and days uh, after the attack. Um, so that's what an investigative process is uh, designed to do, to try to sort through all of the information, some of it contradictory and conflicting. And I want us to keep in mind uh, that four Americans were killed, uh, four men who served our country, dozens of Americans fought for their lives uh, that night, uh, and to honor them, we all have to get uh, to the bottom of every question and answer it to the best of our ability, um, and then we've got to be sure that we apply the lessons we learn to make sure that we protect everybody in harm's way. So I'm going to be, uh, as I have been from the very beginning, cooperating fully with the investigations uh, that are ongoing because nobody wants to know more about uh, what happened and why than I do, and I think I'll leave it at that. I know, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, may, 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 sorry, may I just add, because this, uh, for me, is, a, is an needed opportunity to say how deeply shocked we were in Rome, in the Italian government, for the terrible loss of life of Ambassador Chris Stevens, who, who left many friends and people who, who had the opportunity of appreciating his outstanding job as, a, as an American diplomat, and so important also in terms of looking ahead for uh, the future of Libya. I think that this sacrifice uh, is uh, and should be, and it is surely for the Italian people, a, a, a further indication, a further encouragement to commit ourselves to contribute to the Libya's, uh, Libya's future, the future of the Libyans and the, and the country of freedom of democracy there. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, you mentioned that the, the strength of the relationship between uh, Italy and the United States on many issues, uh, Middle East, Libya. Um, I was wondering if uh, you stand on the same side also in Afghanistan. And Madam Secretary, if I may, 
um, Minister Terzi mentioned the uh, 2013 being the um, year of the uh, Italian culture in the United States. I was wondering if this can be a way to further strengthen the relation in between the two countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. On Afghanistan, uh, uh, we are uh, following uh, the path which was uh, uh, the last time at the highest level in the Chicago uh, NATO summit uh, reiterated and reinforced. Uh, we are following uh, the strategy of uh, empowerment of the Afghan national security in every possible way, and uh, we have common projects in uh, uh, the way we will train and will continue to train a, a, an Afghan uh, security force which has reached now a very considerable uh, uh, number of 350,000 um, uh, personnel uh, in, in globally. Uh, so uh, we are on schedule. The indication that we have from the field are promising. There are still many problems uh, that we are confronting, but uh, we are confident that uh, the agenda that we have established among the ISAF countries, and when you talk about ISAF countries, it's is very important to, to remind that uh, the other day uh, at a meeting, uh, the Ministerial Defense um, uh, meeting uh, uh, three days ago, there were 50 countries around the table. That shows and that proves that the commitment of the international community at large is very strong, solid, and uh, there is a unique agenda for everybody. Afghanistan must uh, go ahead. Over the last 10 years, there have been incredible um, uh, success stories in terms of education, in terms of participation of women, children, and, and development of the country. So uh, we, we have to, to continue and to be positive about, about the future of the country. We, we are working exactly, exactly in the same direction uh, with the United States. And, you know, I, I want to start by uh, expressing great appreciation for the um, sacrifices that Italian soldiers and their families um, have made in support of our mission in Afghanistan. Uh, Italy is the fourth largest contributor uh, to uh, ISAF, uh, the International Security Assistance Force, and leads the ISAF mission in uh, Regional Command West. Uh, they've also, as you know, uh, when President, uh, uh, when Prime Minister Monti and uh, President Karzai met, signed a, a strategic partnership agreement, uh, and Italy has been very generous in committing to help sustain uh, the Afghan National Security Forces after uh, 2014. So, uh, as the minister said, we are working together. We are committed to. Uh, the roadmap set forth first in Lisbon and uh, then in Chicago, uh, and uh, we are very grateful for Italy's contributions and leadership. Um, as to your second question, we are very excited that December marks the beginning of the year of Italian culture. I thought every year was a year of Italian <laughs> culture uh, in the United States. Certainly many of us uh, enjoy it and uh, hope for more. And I hope, though, that by uh, highlighting it as a particular year, uh, everyone can take advantage of the programming and the events uh, that will be uh, planned in cities across the United States. Uh, the very best of Italy, which is very good indeed, will be on display for American audiences, uh, and I'm thrilled that uh, this is going to uh, enhance uh, our close relationship in all the ways that matter, art, music, good food, uh, you uh, just name it, we are uh, very excited about uh, having this year upcoming, and uh, I personally am looking forward to it even deepening and strengthening the ties between our two countries um, more than they already are, which is almost impossible to imagine, but I'm sure uh, can occur. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.